हेलो ऑल वेलकम टू लीगल टॉक्स बाय देसी कानून आई एम सुयश एंड आई एम एक्साइटेड टू हैव स्टार्टेड दिस शो ऑन टुडे शो वी विल टॉक अबाउट अनदर जुडिशियल प्रोनाउंसमेंट बाय द ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन रिलेशन टू रेगुलेशन ऑफ फीस इन द स्कूल्स इन द स्टेट ऑफ राजस्थान द नेम ऑफ द केस इज इंडियन स्कूल जोधपुर एंड एन अदर वर्सेज स्टेट ऑफ राजस्थान एंड अदर्स It was decided on 3rd of May 2021 by the Honorable Supreme Court of India. Now in this case there were two sets of petitions. In the first set of petitions, private unaided schools had assailed the validity of the Rajasthan Schools Regulation of Fee Act 2016. And in the second set of petitions, orders directing deferment of collection of school fees including reduction of fees limited to 70% of tuition fees by CBSC schools and 60% from Rajasthan board schools in view of reduction of syllabus by the respective boards due to the covid-19 pandemic basically in the second set of petitions it was directed by the state government to reduce fees limited to 70% of tuition fees by CBSC schools and 60% from Rajasthan board schools Now in the present show we will divide this into two parts first we will deal with the first set of petitions that had challenged the Rajasthan schools regulation of fee act 2016 the basic grounds of challenge by the petitioner were as follows firstly the petitioner stated that arbitrarily restricting the autonomy of the school to determine fee is violative of article 191g of the constitution of india article 191g talks about freedom in respect of trade profession business etc secondly it was contended by the petitioners that the constitution of school level fee committee under the act of 2016 wherein the school management has only one representative against five parents three teachers and one principal restricts autonomy of the school management to regulate fees it was also contended that the parents who could be the part of the school level fee committee could also be of those kids or those wards who are availing free education under the right of children to free and compulsory education act 2009 and such parents have no stakes at all in relation to the school fees since their kids are studying under the RTE act thirdly it was contended that the division fee regulatory committee and the revision committee constituted under the act of 2016 have powers to issue summons search seizure and penalties thereby considering school fees to be res extra commercium that is a thing that is considered outside the purview of commerce and this endlessly embroils the schools in the process of appeal revision and judicial proceedings putting their financial future in jeopardy fourthly it was contended by the petitioners that the process of determining fees is a dynamic exercise and the factors enumerated under the act of 2016 are vague subjective and irrelevant it was contended that in the case of tma pai foundation and others versus state of karnataka and others 2002 8 scc 481 it was observed that it is in the interests of the general public that the autonomy and non regulation of the school administration will ensure that more good quality schools will get established and lastly it was also urged that the field of regulation of fees of schools is already occupied by the right to education act and the state legislature cannot enact a law on the same subject now what were the grounds that were taken by the state in relation to the act of 2016 the respondent or the state cited various cases such as modern dental college and research center and others versus state of madhya pradesh and others 2016 7 scc 353 in this case identical provisions enacted by various states in relation to fixation of fee by external committees were upheld it was also contended by the state that article 191g of the constitution of india is not an absolute right and the state has the power to regulate such rights 
Now, what were the observations by the court in relation to the Act of 2016 and the first set of petitions? According to the court, it is not open to argue that the government cannot provide for external regulatory mechanism for determination of school fees. And the real question is whether the Act of 2016 stands the test of reasonableness and rationality and balances the rights of the schools under 191G or not. The court also considered the ground that the Right to Education Act already occupies the field and observed that purpose of the Right to Education Act is completely different since it talks about free and compulsory education to the children of the age of 6 to 14 years and otherwise has no connection with the fee structure that is adopted by the schools. Also in this judgment, the court considered the Act of 2016 in great depth and discussed pretty much all the provisions of this Act and upheld the validity of the Act of 2016. However, while upholding the validity of the Act of 2016, it read down the following provisions. Firstly, it read down section 4 that talks about lottery system. According to the court, even the parents of the wards admitted under the Right to Education Act could become a part of the school level fee committee. The court held that the parents who are part of the school level fee committee must be willing, well informed and capable of having a meaningful discourse on the proposal of fee structure. And if those parents are part of the school level fee committee whose kids are not eligible to pay any fees, then it is unlikely that they would have a meaningful discourse on the proposal of fee structure. Such eligibility criteria ought to be specified in the Act. Secondly, the Honorable Supreme Court also read down Section 7 of the Act of 2016 to the extent that the constitution of the Division Fee Regulatory Committee under the Act of 2016 must ensure that only those parents whose wards are actually studying in the school at that point of time are a part of it and such parents should not be the members of the school level fee committee as well of any school. Further, it was directed that such parents should have basic knowledge about the functioning of the schools and that their ward should not have secured admission under the Right to Education Act. Lastly, the court also read down Section 10 of the Act of 2016 that deals with the Revision Committee, wherein the decisions of the Division Fee Regulatory Committee could be assailed or challenged. It read down the provision to the extent that in the Revision Committee, the stipulations contained in relation to the Division Fee Regulatory Committee are to be followed. That is, only those parents whose wards are actually studying in the school at that point of time should be a part of that committee and such parents should not be members of other committees. Thus, in this manner, the court upheld the validity of the Act of 2016 and stated that there could be no doubt that the state does have the power to provide for external regulatory mechanism for determination of school fees. And Section 4, Section 7 and Section 10 were read down based on the test of reasonableness and rationality. Now let us come to the second set of petitions. In the second set of petitions, orders were passed by the Rajasthan government directing deferment of collection of school fees including reduction of fees limited to 70% of tuition fees by CBSC schools and 60% from Rajasthan board schools. These reductions were provided in view of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, those orders were upheld by the division bench of the Honorable Rajasthan High Court and it took the view that such orders could also be passed while exercising the powers under the Disaster Management Act of 2005. As all of us know that presently the provisions of Disaster Management Act 2005 are in question and both the state government and the central governments have wide powers to regulate a lot of things that are related to this pandemic. According to the schools, they were already following the mandate of the Act of 2016 and the fee that has been fixed by the state level fee committee is being followed. 
and further it was contended by the schools or the petitioners that there is no provision under the act of 2016 that permits such interference by the state authorities in respect of school fees further it was urged by the petitioners that the disaster management act has no applicability in the facts of the present case as it has nothing to do with the regulation of fees and it is only concerned with the pandemic now according to the honorable supreme court the disaster management act 2005 provides for preparation of a plan for disaster management by the concerned authorities and i quote it is the direct effect of disaster that is required to be mitigated and not indirect hardship caused to individuals much less in respect of contractual matters and it was further stated by the court that in the scheme of the act of 2005 there is nothing to indicate that the authorities can interfere with contractual matters or indirect hardships such as inability of parents to pay school fees due to pandemic situation and the director of secondary education of state of rajasthan in no way is concerned with the preparation of a disaster plan or its enforcement and implementation under the act of 2005 thus the argument of the state that the disaster management act could also be invoked and it is under the disaster management act that such regulation of fee has been provided was categorically denied by the honorable supreme court further the state of rajasthan also tried to invoke the rajasthan epidemic disease act 2020 to justify its orders in relating to reduction of fees section 4 of the rajasthan epidemic disease act talks about permitting the government to regulate the functioning of offices governmental private and educational but according to the honorable supreme court the same gives no authority to the state government to decide about the fee structure of unaided private schools while considering the second set of petitions the honorable supreme court also observed that the state government cannot issue directions in respect of commercial or economic aspects of legitimate subsisting contracts that is the contracts between the students and the schools and such contracts are between two parties with which the state has no direct causal connection it was further observed that in the guise of management of pandemic situation or to provide mitigation to one of the two parties at the cost of the other this is akin to rob peter to pay paul thus according to the supreme court in the name of managing the pandemic one person cannot be robbed to pay the other more strong remarks were made by the honorable supreme court in this case and it was stated that in the guise of curbing profiteering and commercialization the state cannot transcend the line of regulation and impinge upon the autonomy of the school to fix and collect just and permissible school fees from its students and it is certainly not an essential commodity governed by the legislation such as the essential commodities act 1955 empowering the state to fix tariff or price thereof thus according to the honorable supreme court regulation of school fees is not a commodity that could be governed by legislations such as the essential commodities act and where the school fees is just and permissible the autonomy of the school is paramount and the state has no right to interfere in such affairs another interesting argument that was taken by the government or the respondents was that it was regulating the fees while exercising the powers under article 162 of the constitution of india article 162 provides that the executive or the government has the powers to make laws on all matters to which the legislature of the state has power to make laws on this argument it was the considered view of the honorable supreme court that plethora of cases decided earlier have held that determination of school fee structure is the exclusive prerogative of the school management running a private unaided school and hence in such cases it is not open to the legislature to make a law touching upon that aspect in words of the court ex consequentiae the state government also cannot exercise powers under article 162 of the constitution in that regard 
Thus, where the legislature does not have a power to regulate the fee structure, there the state government also does not have any power. The Honorable Supreme Court further stressed on the fact that the Disaster Management Act is not a panacea for all difficulties, much less not concerning disaster management as such. While holding that the government has no power to reduce fee of the schools, the Honorable Court also observed that this does not mean that the schools have a carte blanche to be oblivious to the conditions of the pandemic, and the school managements should, I quote, reschedule payment of school fee in such a way that not even a single student is left out or denied opportunity of pursuing his or her education so as to effectuate the adage live and let live. Here the Supreme Court is trying to balance the rights of the schools vis-a-vis -vis the rights of the students. Further, the Honorable Court also observed that the schools can collect fees only in respect of activities and facilities which they are providing and demanding fees in respect of overheads that are not being incurred by them would be nothing short of indulging in profiteering and commercialization. Further, according to the court, since the schools were not allowed to be open for a substantial period of time due to the pandemic, they must have saved some overheads and recurring costs on various items such as fuel, maintenance, water, stationery, etc. However, due to lack of empirical data in this regard, the court observed that, despite lack of mathematical exactitude, it would assume that the schools must have saved around 15% of the annual school fees fixed by them for the relevant period. In light of the above stated reasoning, it was held by the Honorable Court that, the schools shall provide a minimum of 15% deduction on the annual school fees to the students and the amount so payable shall be paid in six equal monthly installments before the 5th of August 2021. It was further held by the court that no student shall be debarred or withheld from attending either online or physical classes on account of non-payment of fees and any request to remit fees by the student or parents should be considered sympathetically by the schools. Lastly, the court held that this arrangement that has been mentioned here will not affect the collection of fees for the academic year 2021-2022. So what are my concluding remarks or what is my opinion about this judgment? To be honest, I have mixed feelings about this judgment. On the one hand, the Honorable Court has artistically brought down every nonsensical argument of the government or the state to hold that the regulation of fee is a private affair in case of private unaided schools. But on the other hand, the court went ahead with providing deduction in respect of fees that is to be collected by the schools. Thus, the court brought down all the absurd arguments of the government such as the invocation of Disaster Management Act or the Rajasthan Epidemic Diseases Act to regulate the fee structure. But on the other hand, it also provided deduction to the students in respect of fees. I feel that the court was quite lenient as it also held that the students cannot be debarred by the schools if their parents fail to deposit fees in respect of the academic year 2020-21. So I think the overall winners in this entire battle of regulation of fees are the students and quite rightly so. They are the ones who would suffer the most if the education were not imparted to them. But in the garb of imparting education to the students, I respectfully submit that the Honorable Court has left the parents without any consequences. I think it would be better if some form of mandatory direction with respect to the parents is also given or could have been given to make sure that the parents who are in a position to pay must pay the fees and any failure to do so would entail liabilities not for their kid but directly on them. Thus some kind of consequences could have been fixed on the parents on their failure to pay fees if they were in a position to pay it. 
I feel that a small window of opportunity has been given to the unscrupulous or devious parents who despite having the paying capacity may end up taking undue advantage of this situation and the leniency shown to them by the Honorable Supreme Court. Be that as it may, Honorable Courts can do only so much in such uncertain times. According to me, the best part of the judgment is that the Honorable Supreme Court considered each and every argument advanced by all the sides in detail, in proper spirit and perspective, and did not allow high-handedness or carelessness to prevail. I can just hope that our respective governments also start taking the matters at hand in a serious and a responsible manner as is expected from every legitimate government. It is too bad that for every little thing people have to knock the doors of the court and painstaking efforts have to be made by the courts to balance the rights of the people vis-a-vis the powers of the government, whereas such situations ought not to arise ever if the governments adopt a rational and a sympathetic approach to the legitimate plights of the citizens of this country. So I hope you enjoyed listening to this show. I hope I was able to explain this case properly. Please do not forget to like and subscribe us. See you next time. Till then, stay safe and stay tuned.